Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of the Terror Vision Home Video Podcast. Of course, we got Ryan Grayface, the mayor of Savannah, oh, God. Brad <laughs> Henderson. We've got Chloe. We've got myself, Ryan Verrill, and of course, John Rock Chudson Daly. And we are here live with everybody. What's going on? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm doing uh, fine. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so stoked to see everybody. Uh, we got all kinds of comments, all kinds of people waiting to hear from us. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about. Brad, you want to start us off? Yeah, I mean, um, it's uh, we we're pretty happy with kind of where we're at right now because um, unless you have placed an order over the past like couple days, probably we're uh, pretty much all caught up and. Uh, Everything that we have announced with a pre-order uh, link, um, it's in-house and shipping now. So that's uh, kind of, we've been patting ourselves in the back a little bit about that because it's pretty exciting to be, um, you know, caught up from getting out of the little conundrum here that we've uh, had with uh, kind of a backlog of titles. So, um, you know, and if you haven't, uh, uh, you know, placed an order yet because you're waiting for it to be in house everything's in house and uh shipping now ryan mr mayor did you have anything to add to that no <laughs> no, no I, I, um but yeah no it's it, it's a pretty exciting time because you know uh we you know a year a year ago um you know kind of where we were at with you know i think we announced like Sri Gala and cube and welcome to hell and stuff like that around this time somewhere around there and um you know it was it, we were very um anxious to kind of get the ball rolling because of all the films that we were acquiring and um yeah we just kind of hit a little bit of a wall at times with uh, got things got caught up in QC um, and stuff like that. Cause I mean, mainly we just want to, we want to provide the best possible product there is like, and um, but I think we underestimated time and how long certain things take and how long we have to wait for certain things. Um, so yeah, as we said in the last show that, um, we're only announcing stuff and pre-order stuff that has went through the full QC process. So mainly it's just off to uploading to the replicator, replicator, you know, replicating it and then shipping it to us. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty exciting time. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot behind the scenes of how good it feels to be in this position finally and how it won't revert back to the olden days it's just moving forward and uphill uh from here on out and uh yeah i mean we have a pretty cool slate of films so it it almost like we've been talking a little bit just inside it feels kind of like a, a, a relaunching in a way because it feels fresh and new and it's not so bogged down with stress of getting things out and you know emails coming in and where's my order where's my order where's my order and you know um we're just very thankful that everybody one purchased stuff and two has you know a, most of the people have been incredibly patient with us and so we're thankful for that and we understand the you know the anger from some people of not having their movies we get that too so no harm no foul uh but yeah i'm, I'm pretty excited about uh moving forward and kind of just these announcements that we have ready Speaking of that uh, QC process, I also want to highlight that the some of the titles we're announcing tonight had some of the most rigorous QC process, considering <laughs> we have uh, two of the largest releases that we've done yet. Yeah, yeah. The, the QC process on two of these titles was uh, stupid, is the best way <laughs> best way to put it. Um, it's it, countless hours of... Uh, of um, of QC and just the amount of extras that are on the two, two different releases here is uh, a lot. And, um, you know, and, and three of the films uh, had, I mean, all of them had new restorations per se. One was shot digitally, so there wasn't too much we could do, but it has something else on it that we uh, did a restoration for. So yeah, three are film restorations and it was in one's a UHD and it was a huge, huge process. And um, it's just a long journey for it too, because we found ways to improve 
things as we went. And that was the thing is like, even though we had the ball rolling on certain things, if something popped up that was better or we could, we would actually just delay the release, whether it was three months, six months and nine months, you know, that's kind of how game of killers fell back so hard is because literally at the last second we found uh, there was some audio for it. And why wouldn't we include that? So, and that was already announced and up for pre-order. We kind of, you know, it shoots ourselves in the foot a little bit. But I think after the fact and after people have it, they are more appreciative and understand the process of that, what we had to do in order to get that on there. So. It's a good call. Uh, where do you want to head first here, Brad? Um, well, I think, uh, I think to start, um, since we've kind of announced uh, what we're doing here along with the films is we have a contemporary sale that we're doing. Um, you know, Air Vision, we really love uh, newer films. We love all films. And uh, one of kind of my goals, and Ryan shares this as well, is there's so many good movies wow. out there that are new. Wait, what was that noise? Is everybody Okay. <laughs> I think so. I think that was me. Oh, it's a weird sound you made, honey. It was uh, Siri. <laughs> Siri? She just yeah. Did Siri randomly? pick up my she, voice or something? She did, yeah. She got really <laughs> excited. She said, wow. Oh, my Siri just picked up too because I said her name. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we, we announced that we're doing a contemporary sale. And like I said, with with stuff at Terravision, there's so many newer films that don't get to see um a home video release it's been happening since kind of the big era of streaming and uh the more and more these specific um streaming companies come out screenbox shutter you know stuff on amazon you know all these companies are producing their own content for their streaming service so the chances of a home video release are getting more slim and slim and slim um, so there's a lot of cool movies that are out there that deserve to have uh, the longevity on a home video release because streaming isn't going to last forever because still like some of these companies that are picking up uh, movies and they're picking up their home, these not home video, but they're picking up the rights to the, they're picking up all rights sometimes and they don't have any plans for uh, a home video release. So these films are stuck. And then they're going to be on streaming services for just a few years, and then they're going to disappear. It's already happening. So if you think that movie is disappearing from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, ever from the beginning of time to like up until like the early 2000s, and things are like disappearing because they're not getting a DVD release or a Blu-ray release, it's going to get way worse because they're not having any physical release. So, you know, we've done quite a few newer films, and uh, you know, we can see that the general audience for physical media and collecting and home video and supporting films, a lot of stuff that does well is the older stuff. And I think Ryan and I said, we said like a 20 year mark. We've kind of noticed if something is uh, older than 20 years, it tends to do okay or, or better. Uh, things that are not um, tend to do it worse. And uh, not in a negative way, I mean, but, things don't move as quick or as fast. And I think people are less interested sometimes when it comes to newer films. One, because they can either just stream it and watch it. But there is room uh, for these newer films to have, of course, uh, a, a, a nice a nice release um, on a home video market. And yeah, and that's something that we focused on and we wanted to spotlight them. Uh, so we have 10 titles that are in this contemporary uh, sale. And um, we're super excited about it. We just hope that people give these things uh, more of a chance because we want to continue to do them. Um, so yeah, uh, we're having the contemporary sale. There is uh, an option to do all 10 with slip covers and there's a UHD included into that with when the, uh, when the screaming starts that it is uh, $190 for the bundle. Um, and that gets you all 10 titles with the slip covers, or you could do the standard edition bundle, which is $140, uh, which is a pretty good, you know, pretty good price. Um, and yeah, we're, we're super excited about that. Let's uh, roll the trailer for the sale. Is that, is that what you're leading into? Absolutely. Here we go. Roll that clip. 
Okay, couple of items on the agenda. Firstly, welcome to the family. You have to unlearn your shapes. Okay. Your shapes are all wrong. Smooth operation you guys got going on. Where the hell are you? How much, brother? I'm supposed to be seeing a hidden image of Jesus here? <laughs> How is that possible? What do you think? <laughs> I'm very, very happy. Broski, we gotta bounce for a bit. I'm out of bed. You want anything? Three is not an orgy. It is a threesome. Were you ever gonna tell me about this? I know they exist. I know they're real. I mean, if they ever tell me where they're from, I'll let you know. Be brilliant. You're going to go out, kill someone, and then we can... Watch your film. You look great on camera. Seriously. Seriously, I'm, you look really, really great. You should have just said that. I like getting fucked up. Yeah, come on in. See, from there, we're going to take over the fucking world. Lots of good stuff. Go. Mm -hmm. Rock cut that, that trailer. Fun. Hell yeah. Chudson. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh that's a trailer of the uh, just highlighting the craziness of uh, of the films that are in there. Um the bundle consists of Love and Saucers, Get My Gun, Welcome to Hell, uh the remake of Cube, Some Guy Who Kills People, Parasites, Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla, uh, When the Screaming Starts UHD, All Jacked Up and Full of Worms, and The Head. Um, so quite crazy, quite crazy lineup. Um, we all kind of have like our favorites, I guess. Um, I mean, we could start kind of going around some of our our employee picks. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I'll, uh, mm -hmm. I'll throw out one first uh, as somebody that's on YouTube multiple times a week. I got to give love to Michael Keane. I'm going to go with the head. Uh, everybody needs to pick up this movie if you don't have it. And not only do you need to pick up this movie, pick it up and play it with subtitles so you can get the full context of this film. Uh, this movie is amazing and uh, a hell of a lot of fun. And everybody, everybody needs to see it at least once. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I mean, I think I think Rock, he, he's very anxious. I know what he wants to talk about. Well, I was going to say, too, about the the head, like the documentary on there that he made for the movie, I think is longer than the movie. And it's <laughs> I believe so. really, really good. Um, it's it's really impressive. Um, he's an amazing editor. Um, I brought mine. I got, I'm going to go with Parasites for my, I know Ryan, when I was on, your show on your channel we were talking about um things that automatically invest you in a movie um stuff that is you know on on the checklist and you know i bring up chud basically every time that i can and i definitely get some big chud vibes from parasites even though it's a, a modern movie um yeah, it's really cool. It's got a lot going for it. It's also a, um, it's like a one night in hell kind of a movie, like, a, you know, a night that won't end, like a, a, you know, after hours. It's not like after hours, but it's like <laughs> that that kind of um, vibe. And I was going to say, too, about, um, you know, watching movies that are older and having, um, you know, nostalgia makes sense. I think, thank you, Justin. I think <laughs> that, um, you know, I, I get it. Like, I like watching movies where, like, people don't have cell phones and where they're, you know, we live life in a different way and, and whatnot. But, like, even in Parasites, there's, like, some of the places where they filmed, if you watch the making of or listen to the commentary, it's like, there's bridges that they filmed on that are demolished. There's, you know, this movie is not quite 10 years old but there's already like i don't know you're looking into the past and it's also uh super relevant in its social themes i could keep going but you know <laughs> that's a good one what do you got ryan what's your employee pick 
uh today because i would probably every day i'd have a different opinion probably today is some guy who kills people i think it's um i mean firstly jack perez is like just such he's such a good director and such a good dude and i love the writing also in that film it's very i like the combination of the subtle fun gore uh plot line that actually has some emotion behind it um i, I don't know i'm a huge fan of the movie and i think people are oddly turned off by the title or something so i uh like usually at conventions or something they pick it up and they laugh and then they put it back down. <laughs> <laughs> and i try to explain the plot and get them into it and I think the title is for some reason just not uh doesn't hook you even though i think it's a great title but that's probably my pick for today what about you brad what are we going for tonight um i mean i've i've been promoting kind of welcome to hell to no end um and i'll still continue to do it because i i think it's probably one of the more overlooked movies other than parasites and the catalog um and uh yeah i mean it was it's one of those things where i love black metal but i also find it funny with the lifestyle that comes with of a, like those types of uh of bands and everything um and it kind of pokes fun a little bit at people like burzem and people like you know, that were in mayhem and committed those murders and whatnot but it does it with kind of a very uh um a, the feminist approach to it as far as like you know having stockholm syndrome in that sense and um you know also fighting for your life to get out of an abusive relationship so there's a lot of allegories in it i think that are uh pretty cool but then um you know it really turns out that they're fucking with like satan and shit <laughs> spoiler alert i guess uh it gets pretty fucking nasty and and brutal at the end and um and i had a lot of i had a lot of great uh moments with uh with with working on that because uh, you know most of these discs that we're talking about are or stack you know some guy who kills people there's a ton of extras on that disc uh you know michael did a great job on the head uh parasites i think there was like 14 people that came in to do interviews in that documentary and of course there's a uh um chad gave a bunch of like b-roll and you know music from robert and all this other stuff and you know there's a group commentary on there and welcome to hell we did uh you know i was on the commentary track uh with Jimena and we did that uh you know there's a short film by her on there there's a the black metal music video there's a lot of behind the scenes footage and then I think we did like maybe six seven um uh interviews uh for that um and everybody had a really good time uh, putting that together and everybody was very thankful because you know they said we would have never thought that in a million years our movie would have actually had a disc because it's so rare that yeah. you know contemporary films uh have that um and uh yeah it's it's actually it's really cool for us because we're able to give that to the filmmakers you know because some of these films uh never had even a dvd release um they're just you know straight to uh you know straight to digital and um you know certain things got an upgrade like some guy who kills people and and whatnot but um yeah uh that would be my that would be my pick louie yes i'm <laughs> sure <laughs> i'm sure you could probably guess um but it's love and saucers i abs it's one of my favorite releases that i think we've put out it's just incredible it combines so many different things that i enjoy and it's a for a documentary it's done very respectfully of somebody who has a batshit crazy story so it's just all around just a really fun release and getting to see this david huggins character and see him painting and showing off his paintings <laughs> of his alien girlfriend it's just it's very sweet <laughs> no it's awesome but that that's definitely my probably my favorite and we have a bunch of his paintings in our Chicago museum. That too. It's a very, yeah, we have a whole, we have actually, I think it's the largest display of his 
work on like a permanent kind of installation. Yeah. 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 Which his work, if you can like, you know, if you see it in person, it, it is very, it brings a whole realness to it. That's it's neat to watch the documentary and then actually see his work in person. And he also uh, loves VHS tapes. True. <laughs> <laughs> we a got lot. some questions. Uh, so Dancy wants to know, is this online only or can they go to the brick and mortar in Chicago? Fucking a go to the store. They'll be confused, but let's say yes. <laughs> they'll, call, they'll call Ryan or I and we'll, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can we can we can work that out. We can figure go, it go out. Go to the store and be nice at least, please. Well, definitely. Yeah, and, and also that that they might have them. They should have everything. They'll have them. Um, I just yeah. I just restocked yeah. them last week. So, but yeah, um, and then and if anybody's curious, the um, the sale is the bundle is live on on there. But I would probably when does suggest when that. does that end, Brad? That ends on the twenty sixth. So the sale is pretty long from the 17th to the 26th um, that we'll be promoting it. Um, and we'll be talking about the films uh, throughout the week, uh, you know, highlighting, you know, one here, one there. Um, maybe giving a little bit behind the scenes uh, of uh, what we did. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. Very, very excited. And plus, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing is, I sound like uh, complaining, but I mean, the whole thing is we want to continue to do contemporary films and they need and these things need to actually do well, um, you know, to, uh, you know, to continue to do this because it does it. It's it's costly and uh, it's it, one. It's fun. We love doing it. Um, so, yeah. What are we doing next? Um, we are. um So we are doing, what else are we doing here? <laughs> Maybe announcing some <laughs> we things. We are doing, um, oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do the LP. You want to lead with the trailer this time? Yes, sir. You go ahead. Launch it, baby. Nothing out there, vinyl. Ryan, I'm sure you want to talk about this one. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. By the way, that's a great trailer, Mister yes, nice Mister Chud, Mister Rock Chud. That, that was yeah, my these, day today. That's hot off the press. These bad boys are uh, in hand and shipping immediately. So no more of this fucking long pre-order bullshit. <laughs> Inner sleeves. <laughs> Fucking tons of liner notes and other shit. Colored vinyl. Come on, people. 
Oh, man. Sorry. I'll uh, mail you this one right now. Right? That's, <laughs> that site exclusive one is really, really pretty. Which one do you like? The Terravision or the Grayface exclusive? The, I like the Terravision one. The one I was just showing was the club, which yes. is a, a moot point. Because you don't get that unless you're a clubber, which you can join. But, you know, you could also buy this version. Wee! Which mm -hmm. is, uh, this is the grayface.com mm -hmm. version. In our world, it's B2. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, that's for you. <laughs> Do we, do we see who's in the chat as we roll this? Oh, that's awesome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> First, he's going to see the uh, this beautiful colorway, too. <laughs> Shit looks nice. This is that if you buy so off nice. the Terravision site. This is the variant. Um, so there's three total variants. The club, the one I just showed you, and then that... Uh, green one on gray face so the director kindly did some great liner notes uh earl kest as per usual did the graphic design um which looks fucking awesome and i was gonna show the inner gate fold and yes this is a larger jacket than every other record in your collection <laughs> damn yeah. Sounds, like, sounds a little sexy when you said that, Ryan. I can't see if <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> it's very really nice, though. Show that again, Ryan. Let me uh, let me make you large screen. Mm. That does look like a giant record. Jesus, it's, it's just big. You know, it's a thirteen by thirteen. It's not a twelve by twelve. You're gonna have to adjust. Wow. So is it like the same size of things then? Yeah, that which makes people so angry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's available now and it's incredible because it's not so typically on television, we put out scores, not soundtracks. This is very I'm glad you brought up things. It's actually very similar to things in that regard that it has the songs and you know, so the soundtrack and the score. Um, so if you like the things release that we did, you're going to fucking love this, uh, in many respects, it's better cause you know, it's better music. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, it's actually good music. It's not novelty music. Although that is what makes things great too. Thanks. Anyways, point being, <laughs> yeah. well worth picking up. Uh, we start shipping the, we just got these in like two days ago or something. We'll, we'll start shipping the club tomorrow, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, everyone after ever, everyone else after the club is fully shipped. So I would say if you buy off the site uh, to pre-order, probably mid next week. So it's nice to have something in hand for once, quite frankly. And the LP's on the site and you can buy it now. Yeah, I don't. D did you make that live, little bratty? It's all live. Oh. Little Braddy did. Thank you for saying Little Braddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's two D's in a Y. It's not two T's. I mean, you have a lot of little nicknames for me, um, especially but when I'm, we're on the phone. When I'm in person, it's a little worse. I <laughs> usually call you Little Buddy, though, when we're in person. And it's like... I called you something weird like two hours ago. What was that? I'm like three times the size of you, but I like when you call me Little Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, but anyways, <laughs> this great record is available now. So uh, snag one. It's awesome that the director is is on this uh, live stream with us. So show him show him some love. Yeah, and the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, the movie's so so good, and you. you know it it predates the whole. Uh, you know, I mean, the whole debate is Scream. You know, where uh, you know this kind of predates that uh, that hook. Um, but it's it's a it's fun. It's got i mean it's just it's it's one of those movies that i felt that 
when it came out, there's way, way too many people slept on. And over the past few years, it's obviously gotten a bigger, bigger cult following. And um, yeah, Rolf is a great director too. Like some yeah. of his other stuff has, you know, like the hazing and stuff like that's, you know, pr pretty dope. Um, and uh, yeah, and also the score, like the one thing is I was listening to it the other day, it's it's so different. It's, okay. it's, it's very exciting. It kind of, it keeps it going. Cause a lot of times when you get scores, like they kind of do the same, not a bad thing. They do kind of the same, like, you know, sounds, the same, the same like theme over and over. This kind of jumps around quite a bit and it's actually nice and a little energetic. That's, that's called a recapitulation, Brad. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, yeah. Christopher, Thanks, little buddy. <laughs> Christopher Thomas uh, did a great job with it and um, all the dudes that made the rad you know songs the soundtrack portion did a great job it's it's very varied so like brad said it's it's not a it's not something that you would necessarily like fall asleep to because it's actually pretty captivating i guess yeah what do you think rock you just jammed to it <laughs> you still it was it was easy easy to make that trailer easy to rock out um yeah no there was a lot there's a lot to choose from I dig it. That's and if uh, right if you want the movie to go with it, there's a newer edition up on Ronin Flix to uh, pair with it. Yeah. All right. What do we got next there, Braddy? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> little Brad, uh, or little buddy Brad, or little buddy Braddy. Um, yeah, we have uh, a movie from 1981 that is known for various, various titles. I even think the title card on this one is different, like in Game of Killers, um, hint. Uh, but it is a kung fu movie, so we're getting back to that. So roll that clip, little buddy. <laughs> There are 360 points on each side of the human body, and each point has its own function. Some of these points lie along the arteries and veins. Neck point. Chest point. Heart point. If I wanted to, I'd kill you all now. If I get beaten, then you'd better all run for your lives until they can. You're damn fools! I want you to find those girls. I yes. want you to make me a weapon. A weapon? Yeah. You are right? I'm fine. I made him go to sleep. Do you know how to do it? Did you watch? Yes, I did. Good. Let's try. I'm true shame. I've come to rescue you. Come on. You must work hard and practice harder. That way, you'll be able to beat no harm. Are you talking to me? <laughs> An old kung fu master. Uh... Yeah, so uh, old master um, is what I call it. I mean, it's the the other title is old an old kung fu master, which is I also think it's called uh, ghost. The ghost ghostly returns is what the print says. So um, I mean, w during the time of these films of being distributed after they came out, like in you know Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, like all all these different places, um, uh, when they were. Uh, sent over to the U.S. Uh, in order to get bypassed, like copyright. Sometimes they would put a different title in the front, um, or they would try to trick uh, audiences into seeing something again by retitling it and putting it on, um, you know, a, a, a poster for a drive-in or a theater on 42nd Street or whatever. Um, so yeah, it, things have been uh, kind of crazy with the with, with these films, kind of like Game of Killers. Um, and uh, old master has has really like other than having really really hazy fuzzy uh, uh, bootlegs, um, it's never really seen uh, HD. Um, Joey C says it's on Tubi. It is, but I wouldn't watch that version because that is a version of ours that 
the owner tried to do a uh, auto restoration and it and it takes away certain things from the movie. It does it, that version's not on the disc. Um, but just a heads up, um, I wouldn't watch that. It's not that great, uh, but it is our scan um, and stuff like that. So um, Old Master is it's one of those movies that. It's weird that it's not talked about more often because it has such a giant cast in it with Cecilia Wong, Charles Hung, uh, uh, Chuck, Chuck Chow, uh, Chuck Chow Choing, I think is how you say his last name. Um, but yeah, just an insane amount of, of popular people. And yeah, it's a chop sake movie. I mean, it's funny. It's it's weird. Very much like Game of Killers. The only thing that we couldn't do on this one that we did on Game of Killers is we couldn't include the original audio track. Uh, we did find it. However, it was so bad, it was unusable because there was this popping sound that would can probably like every like 10 seconds or something like that. It was God, we couldn't fix it. And that was the only version that we found. Um, but I mean, the whole thing is getting this film back out there. And, uh, you know, um, I think someone's favorite productions did a uh, did a uh, help with produce a extra on here, Ryan. We did. Uh, there is an extra on this. Uh, you'll see it is called Fist of Beauty, the cinematic history of Cecilia Wong. And it is uh, very similar to the extra that we did on Game of Killers goes through the history of the the main individual in this film that people will probably recognize the name of but maybe not be as familiar with the history of them and uh, I, I think it's great if you are only tangentially familiar with some of the titles of Cecilia Wong I think you'll really be interested in in diving deeper into her filmography and honestly I I'm a little biased, but I, th I think it's pretty great. Uh, I, th I think that there are more like this that should be coming out. People like people like Cecilia Wong and, and like that that release for Game of Killers. They they don't get enough love. Uh, a lot of people just kind of take them for granted, especially with these old films that never got great releases. So I'm just proud that we're able to do it finally. Yeah. So so there's um, yeah. It's been um, it's it was fun kind of kind of bringing these uh, to you know back to. Um, Back to home video and uh, some of these, like the print is the same thing with like Game of Killers and the same thing. Uh, it's actually what I'm going to talk about there is that the the transfers is that this material was in such bad condition that it was uh, reeking of vinegar and uh, literally liquid inside of the cans uh, because they haven't been touched since probably like the theater in the eighties. Um, and we found, uh, both prints around the same time. And, uh, when they were clean and scanned, uh, they were basically bright pink and magenta. I think I months and months ago, I posted uh, a, a picture of kind of how this, um, goes through the process of, you know, basically color correcting it because the whole film needs to be, uh, recolored. Um, and Steve Peer, um, our colorist, did uh, a tremendous, uh, he did a great job on on both Game of Killers and uh, Old Master. And uh, yeah, they were brought back to life and there's minimal restoration on it. Um, but that is because like some of the, the what you see is like hard damage that is not repairable. It's not that some of it does have dirt that's not removed so when a restoration happens they usually can repair like little minor scratches dirt dust that sort of thing but this is like hard hard damage because these things were not treated uh well at all um and has uh, yeah like a fucking crazy journey with these movies so yeah well we're excited to bring it back and uh yeah um old kung fu master Anything about this one, Rock? Well, I was just looking up. You want to talk, you know, people who say, oh, I watched this obscure movie this weekend. So I looked up, I noticed when Game of Killers came out, uh, I looked on Letterboxd to see how many reviews it had, and it had a grand total of three, which I've is like in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory when he's like, asked Charlie Bucket how many candy bars he bought um <laughs> insanely low this has seven so you know we're get 
well, we're not, we're not getting there. We're about to get there, but um, yeah, no, it's it's <laughs> just crazy seeing, um, you know, Game of Wait, Killers. Wait, how, how many does Game of Killers have now with the reviews on Game of Killers has nineteen now. It's and exploded. It's <laughs> yeah, literally, nobody's talking about anything else. Um, just Game of Killers. So, but yeah, and in terms of like the way the way the movies look. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, you know, I'm seeing it in the comments here. Like, it yeah, no, just makes yeah. them more fun. You feel like, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have a big white wall in the living room and project stuff. So it's like, I'm sitting in an old scummy movie theater when I watch these. Well, it's not scummy, but... <laughs> I mean, the, the, theaters, the movie. The movie helps. Theaters that played these movies back in the day were scummy. <laughs> yeah, you would stick to the seats. Um, um, but yeah, I mean th that that is kind of the vibe that um, you know it's something that we're not. It's not going to be you know a common thing because we don't we don't do that. But with the kung fu stuff, it feels good. It feels right. You know, with because uh, we're doing a lot of work on it already, um, and mm -hmm. and yeah, there's more work that could be done, but it also I think takes away from the vibe of the film watching this because I mean this is like again the first time he's ever been in uh, HD uh, as far as I know like these uh, masters are gone gone gone. Um, and uh, all that is surviving are prints if you're lucky to find them. Um, and this, these prints are not easy to come by. Um, they're very, uh, they're very rare. And uh, yeah, no, it's 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 super cool. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I I love what we're doing, and I hope people give these a chance. Yes, like I said, they are top Saki films where there there's a lot of humor added, but. You know, watch it with a couple friends. You're gonna have you're gonna have a good time. Agreed. Anything else on this one, Ryan? No, I just want to <laughs> want to make sure that we get that. Uh, there's nothing out there trailer live on YouTube if we haven't. No, it is okay. So we can send that link to our our dear friend. Yeah, I am right. on it, Ryan. You don't have to. You don't have to worry about your little buddy over here. I'm on it. <laughs> That's how you became the little buddy because I didn't have to worry. <laughs> Sounds like you're worried. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, but yeah. Uh, moving on, I guess, unless there's anything else that anybody wants to add about uh, old Kung Fu Master. Um, might be a little hard to search too because that actor was in another movie and there's very similar titles to a bunch of stuff that's the thing that sucks about these movies too is that the titles get so confusing because there's literally like 20 names uh for yep. these films uh but yeah no we're, we're happy to kind of set the record straight and get this done um uh so our next film is something that uh, i don't think we've hinted at anything on this film at all we haven't even teased an image nothing and i think this is going to be uh, a fairly big surprise for people um i'm super excited about it uh this movie's super fucking dope and it's weird and it's italian and i'll just say roll that clip little buddy <laughs> professor that means that your research on the regeneration of cells is complete it's the greatest discovery of all time. I like your mind. Make me wiser. I like your eyes. Make wise. Oh, baby. Satanic, 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 satanic. Satanic. Yeah, baby, 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 I need you. In our profession, holidays, are always something of a pipe dream. <laughs> The little chick has flown the coop. And she'll vanish without a trace again. 
comments yeah so uh satanic is um, awesome satanic is fucking awesome yeah there's there's so many uh great things about satanic coming from kind of the euro spy um you know thriller that's mixed like with horror um and it's just it's a really pretty film it 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 kind of puts in uh, a little riffs off of uh you know comic books from that era um of uh or not comic books but comics uh from that era of uh you know um, satanic and uh yeah it's 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 a rare it's a more rare film and it's uh actually this is the first i i want to say um by looking this up i don't think this has ever had a dvd in the u.s uh legitimate release that's like an official release it's always been bootlegs um and uh yeah the the color has always been off uh for this film um if you look at some of those old dvds like her hair is purple <laughs> at times um and it's and it's not um so this actually went um through a long process of of uh with the restoration and color it was actually uh color time from two existing other prints so the 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 restorations from a mixture of vaulted elements um and it has a 2k scan um but it was actually color time from two really nice looking prints that was probably the most accurate um uh, in order to color time to figure out what was originally supposed to be what this movie was supposed to look like. And uh, it's always been off. So it's actually nice to have that also um, the first, you know, Blu-ray release in the world. Um, it had a DVD release in Italy like years ago, but it's, it's been something that's just kind of like disappeared. And um, also the extras on this, um, were was kind of a blessing to get um eugenio as you can see he was on the commentary he did a visual essay eugenio is like he's like a wonder boy he's a wonder man he's a good looking dude we'll say that so he, eugenio's a wonder man um he did uh, a commentary for this he did some he got some new interviews uh together he had an archival interview with the passed away director um it also comes with uh two visual essays uh one from eugenio one from alexandra heller nichols and also has the soundtrack uh to the film but also something that's really cool is it comes with the english dub so we have the original language on there with uh newly created subtitles along with the english dub that was put out. so uh a pretty cool um uh kind of package on something that is uh you know pretty rare so we're we're super excited about this one um it also comes with a bundle with a t-shirt um with a satanic t-shirt that looks pretty damn rad that's um, awesome. Even if you don't know that movie very well, go to church with that I mean, shit. Yeah, that shirt <laughs> is super dope. Um, but yeah, it, this movie is just a blast. It's it's, it's a fun. it's a lot of fun and it's super groovy. Uh, the soundtrack is also very very groovy. Um, and there is an Easter egg on the disc that's not listed anywhere. You have to get the disc to find out what it is. Um, a little, it's nothing too grand or huge or life-changing it's just a fun little thing that we added uh to it um but yeah uh i'm very very happy about this uh ron was a big fan of this one and this was one of his uh uh big nets that he wanted um yeah. i love it too um but yeah just a a great good old time anybody else want to mention anything on 1968 satanic no jack it's up, it's up on there, Jack. Uh, oh, yeah. It is up on the wholesale yeah. page now. Um, yeah, I, I will say this movie is beautiful. I was so glad that we could get a Eugenio on this. So, yeah. Yeah, agreed. 
Yeah. Anything else? Satanic rock? It's, it's Satanic gorgeous. Rock. It's very stylish. What else can yeah, you say? Yeah, no, I mean that's the thing, is like every every shot in this movie, there's the the architecture with like where they are, um, mm -hmm. the the clothing, like everything's super like stylish in this movie. And it's like this really like like I said, it's kind of a riff off like you know James Bond stuff and whatnot, but it's like a monstrous, like kind of like little uh, Jekyll and Hyde type thing too. It's like such a mixture. Mm -hmm. um, and even though it's like a action movie, there is so many different like genres kind of sprinkled in. Um, and yeah, it's just it. And also, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. Oh my god, I can't think of her. I can't think of the lead's name. Anyway, she's beautiful. She does a great job. She's wonderful. Can't believe I, it starts with an M, I think. Is this movie uh, sexy? Is it sexy? It's like yeah. Magda, Magda <laughs> Kanopka. Oh, yeah, Magda Kanopka. Mag yeah. Yep. Magda um, yeah, she's still she's still around, um, but she's like disappeared from uh, the industry. So you're saying acts of it sexy? Is this movie sexy? Um, I mean, I would say so. Me too. I mean, she's beautiful. Yeah, Me she's too. she's very beautiful, and uh, yeah, I mean, she her outfits are fucking killer in the movie. So, no pun intended. All right, two titles left. Should we get into the the big chunky titles? <laughs> yeah, this one is chunky, and uh, yeah, just 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 roll it, baby. Just roll. Monorski is an icon of B filmmaking. And quite frankly, I don't think it'll ever be. He is probably America's most serious, sublime, and cerebral independent film director. It's gonna be nothing but hot chicks with huge tits all over the place. They're gonna do a documentary on me, and I, I hate it. He was interested in low-budget films and what would I say, exploitation. Love those boobs. I play Felicia. It was a hooker witch. He had no girlfriend, no nothing. You know when no chick lives here, you, you expect spices, you get books, and videos. It's a living. You know, it beats uh, being a janitor. Ladies, for lighting for the final crap? Maybe. Where is that scene where they talk? It was the roughest not sex I've ever had. To do a low budget movie would take three weeks or a month. And now apparently we're doing it in three days. This is a lesson for all you stupid, 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 stupid chicks out in Hollywood. Now, did he have to do that? Why did he just stick to the story? Three days is not going to cut it, in my opinion. We're going to crash and burn. I mean, it's pretty and it's erotic, but it's, I wouldn't call that a real movie. You know, B is just one letter down from A. So, it's pretty damn close. <laughs> uh so this good. was probably the most fun um project that started out really small and became something like so huge in a That's sense so awesome. uh, like one of our like most stacked disc it's a, it's almost kind of like it's 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 crazy so first off um you know Papatopoulos is great uh it's a great documentary but it's also it it's in vain of kind of american movie where it's very easy to rewatch um because it is funny it plays as a comedy um and uh it's it, you also do learn things i guess I, I know rock really wants to talk about this so i'll let him talk more about the movie i'll talk more about a little bit of the extras so um this thing is so stacked with shit. it is so good um one i mean we have the original uh dv master uh for the film which it looks good um, you know, uh, it, it really kind of, it's almost like, uh, uh, voyeuristic in the sense of how it was shot because clay just had to kind of get out of the way and let Jim do his thing, but it comes with a three hour work print of the film. <laughs> and this movie is like, what is it, John? Like only like 70 some minutes, like 75 minutes or something. It's very, very slim. Yeah. 75. <laughs> and it's, it's like a chunky work print, which gives a lot of crazy shit in it. Uh, but the highlights in this 
is uh, what I think really sells uh, the movie is it comes with the full length, which is a breast wick with a new HD transfer of the movie that this movie is based around. Well, Papatopoulos is made from uh, behind the scenes of two movies being made around the same time, but mainly, which is a breast wick is the, is the main like chunk. Um, so, uh, yeah, it comes with the full new restoration of which is a breast wick. Um, it has a commentary with uh, Clay Westervelt, Brooks Larson, Lee Sanders, who's a composer, a commentary with Monique Parent and Antonia Dorian, a uh, visual essay. Uh, Ryan, you want to talk about that real quick? Because that's someone's favorite productions I read. It is. Yeah, we, uh, we we went all out on this one, had a literal film crew out. And uh, if you are a big fan of Dr. Will Dotson, you'll see somebody that looks a hell of a lot like him presenting his love for Jim Wynorski. And uh, Will has been using the hashtag restore the Wynorski verse on the Internet for years. And uh, this if you like anything Jim Wynorski related, this uh, this visual essay is going to be something that you are going to adore, I think. So check it out as soon as you get this disc. And uh, yeah, it comes with a uh, new interview with Jim, new interview with Clay, who directed it, new interview with Monique, uh, stills and poster gallery, which I think is pretty long, right, Rock? Like, it's kind of insane. Oh, yeah, like the, it's a full, basically another full slower tour around Jim's house and <laughs> yeah. all, 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 um, all his, his movies. And that there's like a uh, actually... Uh, sent a picture of this to to Will so that he could enjoy the Winorski verse. There's like a picture of Jim Winorski, like an airbrush painting that is like of him as a gangster, hold, like holding a blonde woman. It's really nice. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, yeah. New, uh, very, interview with Gigi Bernetta. Uh, interview with Paul Kufos, which Paul Kufos is pretty hilarious. He has a really there's a really hilarious story why Paul Kufos and Wynorski. Uh Teresa Wynorski's deleted scene where I think she talks more about Westerns and like the whole idea of having uh, Jim, that's Jim's mom, Jim Wynorski's mom in the movie. She is the highlight and the doll baby uh, behind this whole, whole, uh, whole shebang. And her, her interviews adorable and cute and uh, very sentimental. Uh, she's recently passed. Not to, she lived to be like 100 and some years old. Like it's crazy. And she's just kind of like getting up and around and talking about how much she, uh, you know, Chopping Mall is, I think, her favorite of Jim's movies, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah. And then, except uh, yeah, for the, except it, for the nudity. <laughs> yeah, except for the nudity. Yeah, that's right. So it's. Um, mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the House of Julie Strain, which is an older extra, it's basically Julie giving a tour of her home. Uh, the Egyptian premiere, Jim talking about a bunch of shit. There's like five different things he talks about. Killbot Jr. campaign, uh, um, Monique Parent's commercial reel. So people don't know what happened to Monique Parent. She's like doing commercials for all these high-end places like Target and shit. Uh, so she's made a huge career in uh, television and whatnot. Uh, a long Papatopoulos promo trailer and new extras. Um, so yeah, this thing is stacked. I'll let somebody else uh, well, take Ryan, it. Ryan, can you show that shirt? Because it's fucking hilarious that comes with the bundle. Oh yeah, we'll we'll talk about the bundle. Too. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's like the best the best television shirt save of all time. Save one, save one for me. Wow. <laughs> well, and not only the shirt. Look at everything that is in this bundle. This is a steal. Yeah. So we yeah the shirt, the three cassettes of the soundtracks uh, of, that we've been carrying, and then uh, the Return of Swamp Thing bumper sticker and uh, pin. So. Yeah, that's such a cool release. Boom. Yeah, and also Amazing. recently talked about on Colbert Report, uh, <laughs> yes. he brought up which is a Breastwick like last week, which is very funny. Mainly because I guess you know obviously Stormy Daniels is in the news because Stormy's in this movie. Um, but yeah, just uh, really really uh, fun. Um, but John, I know you're a fan of this. I'll let you talk about it more. Big big fan of it. Um. One thing, just to make sure, I didn't, this didn't click with me instantly. Maybe I'm slow, but just for every, I know Clay, the director, wrote an email 
that it was kind of like you get it like about the title where um that jim winorski has directed directed so many movies like i think even in one of these pieces he says that he, like he looks on cable one day and he, he's got six of his own movies are playing simultaneously he's just like <laughs> everybody's seen a jim winorski movie but you know probably most people by accident uh, that he uses a ton of different pseudonyms and I don't even think they say it in the movie itself, but um, you know, one of his names is Tom Tom Papatopoulos, but it's spelled like the Greek way. And I mean, I can just imagine Clay having that moment where, you know, because Jim gives himself the name because it's about girls popping their tops, but then Clay changes it a little bit to be like, you know, Metropolis. So like Papatopoulos is this, I don't know, this shining city on the hill where you can make <laughs> movies in just three days with you know soft core scenarios and never never lose a dime so it's a it's a beautiful place um but yeah i'll agree with brad that this is totally a movie that like don't be scared that it's a documentary at all because i i would put this in the category of like american movie or gray gardens or just any of those movies where like the the person it's about is such a character that it's super rewatchable um even if even if you're not interested in the the the, the filmmaking part of it and i think that there's a lot to learn um about what to do and what not to do from the movie itself and then like you say, this this stack disc is like, you know, I was saying to Brad the other day, it's like, you know, I hear Joe Pesci from like JFK in my head where it's like, it's a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Cause it's like, you have the movie and then you have the movie that they're making. And then you have this, the new interviews that almost, I mean, they're the, the new interviews together are like over an hour and they've really shed a lot of light and just kind of like fill in they're just it's like it's like one big companion piece to the movie but you do get a lot more information from that especially from clay's interview where it's it almost fills in his is like a 40 minute interview that kind of almost fills him in as like a character because he is kind of a character character because he's you know he's in he's in the room and you know making friends with all the actresses in this movie um but I don't know if I had anything else specifically to say about it I did think that it was funny editing the three interviews I got like again maybe calling it like Rashomon vibes is maybe giving it a little too much credit but everybody kind of had a little bit of a different angle talking about the same thing though it is more two on one like clay and monique to to jim cuz you know jim is you know jim, jim is jim, it's jim. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah so. it's yeah, an amazing it's, disc yeah it's it's it, and it's just like it, it is feel good even though like you know jim is kind of just grumpy jim and a curmudgeon in a way but he just has like such a um he brings such a, a charm to things even though people are irritated with him he oh, is goodness. he is just incredibly like he does care but he plays he's an actor in the sense when he's on set and you kind of get to really see that in papatopoulos but also like with jim's like because i think his interview starts off with like if it wasn't about me i would love it but I hate it. <laughs> you know, and I actually think that Jim is pretty, he does pretty well considering like, I don't know, if I if you had to make a movie in three days, it's like you get, you know, you, he gets all these people that care about him and they all get along well. And then it's like, for as much like, manufacture you know self-manufactured stress because he agrees to to make this movie in three days although he did 
he does express relief that uh, he didn't, he had almost agreed to make it in two, but he's like, whew, this is way, way better to do it in three. And I think everybody that sees the Witches of Brestwick will see that that third day makes that picture. <laughs> but, I think you're absolutely right. Ryan, any thoughts on Papatopoulos? Buy it. It's fucking awesome. It's, I mean, it's, it's just fucking hilarious. Chloe, do you have anything to add about any of these? At the moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm enjoying all the trailers, though. They're really well put together. So That's all rock, rock, baby. I all know. rock. Look at rock. Thank you. Very good job. Very well done. All right. And uh, now to... Uh, our last um our last actual physical announcement um something that was again so time consuming we'll talk about it uh in a second here we go roll that, roll that clip baby you know there ain't been no one killed around here in over 10 years all of a sudden it seems like everybody's died it seems like someone's just gone plumb loco with a hammer and a box of nails. Do you remember when you could sit outside and not worry about the mosquitoes and the killers? I think the pokey man's out here waiting for somebody to walk up so we can nail him. It was just an animal. Would you give it a rest? Just let that killer show up. Because I'll cut him up this year chainsaw. Who or what was that? The moon is right. This man's ready to howl. <laughs> God, you're disgusting! Don't you ever think of anything else? I haven't seen anything this brutal since now. If this ain't one hell of a horror movie, it's one hell of a Baca revenge. Damn, I'm glad you stopped. This is the most godforsaken road I've ever been on. God! The party's <laughs> I mean Nailgun Massacre and UHD um one uh originally this was going to be uh, a new restoration from um you know with what we had because I felt that the previous Blu-rays they weren't the best they were fine um but uh when we were working through things with the material um we found out we we're able to do uhd uh with it and uh, it really it really changed a lot of things uh internally with with like just the film and like the presentation it's it was a huge upgrade one, the restoration looked great compared to the other stuff, uh, but the UHD really kind of brought in what makes uh, kind of um, like nail gun special. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it goes back to its um, original aspect ratio. Um, but also uh, this is, um, I guess we didn't say, I meant to say this with, uh, with um papatopoulos is that papatopoulos is the like definitive edition of that movie like no one's i don't possibly think anybody <laughs> could do it any better uh you can try uh but um the thing well after our license is done um but uh nail gun uh incorporates uh all extras that were done uh previously for this uh for this release so we have um the uhd uh, it also comes with uh, a Blu-ray of the new restoration, but also comes with the old 4x3 uh, restoration that was done along with the other widescreen archival restoration. So four different ways to watch the film. We say watch the Blu-ray and UHD of our restorations, but the other two were on there. There was a new commentary by the Hysteria Continues, so it's replaced from the old one that they did. Uh, a new commentary from uh, myself and Will Dodson. Uh, this is one of our first commentaries that we did late last summer. And uh, man, 
this is a crazy movie to talk about. Uh, if you've never seen it, again, lots to highlight. This movie is a classic. Love this movie. And then um, an archival uh, commentary from Lloyd. Uh, Lloyd uh, owns uh, Texas Frightmare. He hosts that big show, and he actually is the owner of of Nailgun Massacre. Uh, he's a massive fan. Uh, sadly, um, uh, Terry Lofton is no longer with us, and but he left Nailgun in good hands uh, from a super fan. Um, but this also includes uh, a new audio interview with Connie Spear, one of the actresses, a new interview with Michelle Meyer, um, who plays uh, the victim, uh, interview with Rocky Patterson, who plays uh, the main um, kind of investigative, not the cop, but the other guy, uh, interview with Lloyd, um, and then archival interview with Terry, um, archival interview with Whitey, a new visual essay from Alexandra Heller Nicholas, uh, a segment uh, called Rewind Zone from Rube Moore TV with Yasmina Kedia, um, where she talks about these types of movies and has fun with it. There's a Q&A with Alamo Drafthouse screening, a location featurette, or an old, this is from the uh, Synapse DVD. Um, actually, I think the location featurette and the archival making of is from the Synapse DVD. Don worked with us in getting those on there. Uh, Nailgun Q&A with Joe Bob Briggs, uh, outtakes and bloopers, pro promotional trailer, and newly created subtitles. Um, Fucking crazy. In so other words, yeah, holy God, there's Anything that's ever been done here. for this movie, as far as I can see. Definitive it's edition. On, it's on this disc. So, uh, and plus, like, it's the best, uh, best version that you'll uh, ever see of this. And uh, and it was cool because we got to really work on, and th yeah, this is embossed and- yeah, It doesn't really translate, nice. but the, no. the embossment is awesome. All this yeah. is nice and textured. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the color was kind of cool to work on this because um, typically sometimes with restorations, when color, like a new like, colorist comes in and does things, um it it kind of changes kind of the feel and tone of the film um and then uh with nail gun it didn't i think it made it grittier and darker and what it actually is supposed to look like um so we had a lot of fun with this one and that's one of the reasons why it was so delayed from our initial time of announcing it same thing with papatopoulos is that the chances to do extra and bigger things came into play and that's was the priority um so that's the reason why these two were delayed and of course everything else we announced there's reasons why those are delayed too and they'll look uh great as well you just have to be patient because the thing is is how we operate is different we have a schedule that we want to stick to but if new things come to us and we're able to make anything better um we will do it uh and if that has to delay the movie six to eight months it's going to happen. Lloyd's in the comments right here. Thank you, Lloyd, for trusting us uh, with your film, your favorite film. Um, and then also uh, you have, uh, yeah, there we go. Ryan, hey, Lloyd, has, do you have uh, this? Do you have the impossibly rare video store poster? He does. And it's featured in his new interview exactly. uh, on the disc. I love this fucking thing. I've had this hanging into my bedroom since I was a wee lad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a this is a dream come true so yeah it was uh a, again a blast to put together and uh we will be talking about of course nail gun for the next uh you know four years <laughs> <laughs> uh for forever uh highlighting a lot about uh what's in the film what what went on um so yeah it's uh a lot, you know, just just a a wonderful kind of package, and uh, also available now that if you go to the site, the bundle, the television bundle is available that has all four films in it, and then also we oh, have. Can you show the bigger. shirt? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right, Nailgun shirt. I forgot. We had a new shirt for Nailgun Masker. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dope. Earl did well, a really sorry. good job. It's cheaper than a chainsaw. Earl always <laughs> does good work. It always it's always funny. The most ridiculous thing in Nailgun is when the two construction workers 
are shooting each other with nail guns, and it's like a fun game. It's like the <laughs> scariest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, yeah. Scarier than fucking getting killed. Uh, but yeah, so we have uh, the bundle that just has the discs, and then we also have the mega bundle that consists of uh, the four Blu-rays, uh, um, the There's Nothing Out There LP, and then also all three shirts. Um, so you can pick that up as well. Um, and I, I, I mean, I think we have kind of everything covered on that side of what we have to offer. Um, well, I, I didn't, I forgot as we were announcing movies, I was too oh, excited. I do have the yeah. other slips. So Old Kung Fu That's Master. Oh, yeah. Got Satanic. We. That's so pretty. That Look one is that. beautiful. Look at that, people. Let's pop some tops. <laughs> so yeah, that's what uh, that's what we're looking at on these four. Plus, obviously, the embossed nail gun. And yeah, all the slips are limited. Uh, quantities are on the site. Uh, Brad, for those that are not in the Terrorvision Discord, we had somebody ask in the Discord earlier about the next Grayface title. You want to explain that one? Yeah, yeah. So there's no uh, Grayface title tonight. Um, what we're going to do is that was kind of the initial launch with the first um, with the first uh, batch that we did with River. Um, but Grayface will be its own thing and we'll probably do, what do you say, in two weeks, Ryan? Yeah, to every every two to three weeks, you know. Yeah. After, after a television announcement, because we just need to, we just want to highlight. There are different kinds of films. We want to highlight them differently, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels a little odd announcing uh, certain, like, our next title with Nailgun and Papatopoulos. It just, it feels, it feels weird. <laughs> There's such a different vibe, and, and they're, you know, like they're it's not they're fun, but in a different different way. Um, so yeah, th those will be different, uh, different announcements, and yeah, uh, uh, two 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 to three weeks, and we'll let you know when the announcement's ready. Um, right now, we're going to be working on um, you know making sure that these get in the warehouse soon and yeah, get things going. But like I said. Bundles available for the contemporary stuff, and then uh, you know all the bundles are available, um, and then tacking on whatever else that you want uh, that looks good. Um, and yeah, it, just, it was just a lot of hard work with this stuff. Show off that poster again, baby. <laughs> uh, There's only five on Earth, I've been told. I don't know if that's true, but geez. well, I think Lloyd said he said he's only this is the third one he's seen, so it's just I guess, yeah. Yes. That would be his and, and yours, and then some some oh. other person would yeah. probably beat him up. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think we can probably, unless there's anything else, Chloe, did you have anything to add at the end? Um, mm. Nailgun is just a very fun movie, um, which I'm excited about because I've actually seen that one. Um, <laughs> but but no, I'm, I'm excited about it. And it, truly, the the webcam look at the embossed does not come close to doing it justice. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah, it actually kind of looks like shit on the webcam. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Like, can you, like, angle it or something? I don't know. I'm, but I mean, it just, I... just trust us. It looks... Don't, wiggling, don't, it's not... You don't need to wiggle it. No. That's it's, all I do. It looks too glossy, like, in a way, on here. And it's not... It looks like yeah. shit. It's, it's not. It's picking up a hundred percent gloss in none of the embossed parts. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. The embossed. It, I I got to check it out a couple weeks ago. It looks, it looks great. so good. Yeah. No, it's one of the nicest slip covers I think we've put out. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, one thing we haven't said. When are the shipping? Do we know? Uh, no. But it will be. In yeah, the we, next well, three. something that we've learned. We don't give dates. However, they are. <laughs> Up to the replicator, and they will be in that process. Yeah, it's like we're just, probably we're just saying, May. yeah. But yeah, we're no longer giving dates because people like literally threaten to slit our throats when we give dates and miss them. So, yep. <laughs> and that's not a lie. That's actually yeah. the truth. Yeah, We've had are. actual literal death threats yeah. uh, from doing this, which makes a, the Blu-ray business very fun, by the way. Oh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Getting death threats and 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 yeah. So, but uh, yeah, so uh, it will be in May. 
Um, it's just that we will have uh, we will say when that is it's it's going to be it's it's won't be six months from now <laughs> it won't be june it won't be june yeah, it won't be june either you know so it's just that you know we we are at the mercy of like shipping and things do get delayed in that sense and you know even if it's a couple days people will hold you to a day so uh yeah it's just it's just a pre-order but it will be very soon three four weeks the same thing is like how quick um dream stalker and all of those came in very similar by the way the lp that we announced tonight shipping now yeah that's true yeah that's all that's all i had to say <laughs> no I, I, well, I, right. I appreciate you adding that um rock anything you'd like to add before i guess we do like a a short q a can i can i start the q a <laughs> can i do you want to ourselves? ask us a question, or are you just going to ask yourself a question? Can you ask me a question? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you a question. Well, I one thing that I find, even as somebody who works here, is there's so much stuff always going on, and um, um, in the real world, in Savannah and in Chicago, and if you'd like to, I think it. It's a very interesting part. I know it's not directly Terror Vision per se, but I think like there's a lot of really cool adjacent stuff going on. I noticed that there's a true crime convention happening soon. I'd like to know about that. <laughs> Would you tell hey, me about Chloe, that? Chloe, Ryan you and Chloe? talk about that. That's, that's sure. your thing. Yeah, so we're, we're hosting our first true crime convention. Um, Ryan and I have never never done that before and that's through our museum we run a true crime and oddities museum in savannah it's um very large and then we have a mini museum in chicago which we talked about a little bit earlier that's where the david huggins paintings are but yeah it, basically that will be uh, a convention done in a unique way where it's case study style on john wayne gacy specifically and we're bringing in a ton of different um experts on the case, people that have researched the case over years, worked it in some capacity or have some personal tie to that that specific case. And then Ryan, that's actually where we're doing an advanced screening of the doc Ryan's been working on about the case. So so yeah, we're excited to actually get that out in some form. It's it's gonna it's still, you know, gonna it needs to be tidied up and finished, but it's it's nearly there. So yeah, that's going to be a whole day event, um, May 11th. Yeah, if you want to be depressed, come to Savannah. On yeah, May it's going to be just, <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's going to be very interesting. Um, yeah. I'm so excited to talk about pedophilia for 12 hours. Yeah. I, I actually it's, am. That's the scary <laughs> part. <laughs> it's a fa it is a fascinating Can you get more clarity on that statement <laughs> uh, well i mean i'm pretty sure anyone that's watching this knows that john wayne gacy was a pedophile yeah to in case you missed that initial yeah in case you missed one of the largest <laughs> cases in the entire history of this country yeah. he may have yes. been a pervert he could have been a pervert i don't know wild crazy idea yeah <laughs> so <laughs> anyways so that's happening and yeah, it's a pretty big deal because that's again first, it's our first convention. So first time, yeah. We we have intentions of doing horror cons mm -hmm. probably in Savannah, and then this Gacy thing we'll probably do in Chicago at some point. Um, Are these we'll all folks that you met while making the, the yes. documentary? They are yeah. nice. Yeah, it's mostly people that are interviewed in the doc, um, and. Yeah. Some of them have been interviewed in other docs, but my one skill set in life is certainly not my sense of humor, but it is getting in a serious interview form and fashion, getting people to be comfortable with me and say things that they have not said previously because they didn't feel comfortable with other interviewers. So I get incredibly insane information, which is the only reason that I'm making this docu series because it's literally all new information. It doesn't, Act, shockingly, mm -hmm. it almost doesn't talk about Gacy 
like every other doc does. Like there's no recap of his crimes. You either know his case or you don't. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's a trip, but uh, yeah. but it's not fun. It's not a fun docu series. It's really fucking depressing, and uh, it's what I do all day, every day, and it's affected me greatly. Yeehaw. <laughs> It's, one it's way to gotta be it. kind of fun. Something's gotta be fun about it. Well, I, I, bringing closure to families that are suffering because, you know, their loved ones were murdered and the police didn't give a fuck at all about their children or brothers or sisters or whomever. That's the thing. Gacy's not... Gacy's so complex. People view him in a very sort of pigeonhole light because that's what other docs want you to believe. So there's a specific police narrative that my whole thing okay. breaks down. So we start from scratch, basically. Um, so it is fun to help people, and uh, but it it's I'm not gonna lie, it it weighs on you all day every day hearing such awful shit. There's so many victims in this world of various things that their voice is never heard. So if I can be a vehicle to get their voice out there, then I feel good, basically. All right, Q and A cool. time. I think that was Q and A time. That was. <laughs> <laughs> that was John's. Thank, Q &A thank, time. thank you for my Q and A time. I appreciate hearing about that. It's cool shit. Uh, uh, related not, question: Any docs or books on the Gacy case that you'd recommend, Ryan or Chloe? So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I guess there's a couple new ones that I haven't read that just came out like this week. Um, Karen Conti, who's a friend of mine, who was Gacy's final appellate attorney, just dropped a book. Um, it's going to be good because she's she's a super interesting person. But her perspective is very her perspective. It's not like a it's not an whole, overview. Yeah, it's not. It's about her story with Gacy, uh, which is a super interesting story. So I definitely recommend grabbing that. Um, but that's kind of the, my complaint with Gacy is every doc that I've ever seen sucks. That sounds really harsh because some of my friends have made <laughs> Gacy docs, but they're just very, very narrow cast. And they ask some questions. The questions are good, but they don't give any <laughs> answers. So you right. just you just leave their docs being like, hey, they pose so many interesting questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Why no follow-up? And my whole thing is basically follow-up, if that makes sense. So, so no, that's... I'm not making something just to make something. Um, I'm making something because I don't see that vision out on the market over the past 40-plus years. So, so, no. All right, next question. Can we combine a gray face order with a terror vision order? No. Well, I had, no. Mm -hmm. Well. This, yeah. Oh, oh, God. Chloe's saying yes. That's going to open a fucking. No, no. I'll keep it at a no. Sorry. Just write. If you want to do anything <laughs> at all on Earth, just write us. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's not really an option on the site to do that. So. No, there's. Yeah. Just reach out to like the orders at Terror Vision, um, both Brandon and Elena man that email or reach out to elena directly yeah there's there's options but we're such not a small like... company that it's not a big deal but it's Just... i've never thought about it but i'm sure if you wrote elena yeah. she there's would a say way hey, to... ryan yeah. what do you think about this and i would say okay so that's how small we we operate for for people who don't know too like and i guess i'm asking to the gray face site <laughs> <laughs> just has its terror vision and more, right? Like, well, every, like, is there anything that you can't get yeah. from terror vision on there? Well, from terror vision, no. The whole point of the Grayface site is kind of addressing your initial question or statement that there's all these things going on in my universe that we really don't talk about at all with terror vision. So and instead mm -hmm. of just cramming all that shit to Terravision, it made more sense to add Terravision stuff to the Grayface site. So mm -hmm. the Grayface mm -hmm. site encompasses Never Not Goth, which is my goth clothing brand, um, and dance dance party night here in Savannah. 
uh, obviously encompasses the Grayface Museum and the apparel and pins and shit for that. The Grayface record label, which is a bunch of indie rock and shoegaze and post rock and that sort of music. Um, so it's basically if you are more interested in our larger universe, you should order from grayface.com mm -hmm. because it's technically a different company, um, even though I own them both. But it is they are separate and I try to keep them separate. But if you're only interested in the horror shit that we do, might as well just order off television because why not? Um, so I don't know if that answers any questions, but <laughs> perfect. Well, you also have, so, um, no, I think it, no, but if you go to grayface.com, do you need to, you can just get it all there. That's it's just one, one, one stop. Well, technically speaking. Yes. But the difference is something like the, the weird bundles, like the Wynorski bundle with his mm -hmm. face on a fucking oh. shirt. That's not going to be on the gray face. Right. Like, cause it's nothing that we're distributing. So if you think of Terravision, pretend I don't own Terravision and it's, okay. you know, like Culture Shock or another or Mystic Vault or someone that we work with, we're helping them distribute product. I'm sure those other imprints release T-shirts and things that we're not distributing. So it's the same mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. You know, things that you're making like 10 of, you're not going to push to a distributor, if that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it makes sense to me. You now, also have. Now um, I know. You also have exclusive variants of the records specifically on Grayface.com versus Terravision. Right, and the reason for that is because Grayface is a record label and a series of stores and museums, and then it's also a distribution company. But they're all different companies. I know that's super confusing because it's all the same name, but they're literally different companies. So in order to bump up sales to other stores that aren't stores that I own, it's uh, it's obviously more compelling to an indie retail record shop if we have an exclusive variant for them. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started doing, you know, vinyl okay. exclusives through grayface.com that aren't on the television site. Mm -hmm. uh, if that all makes sense, it makes sense up here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure a lot uh, of things do. So to go to another question, uh, what's going on with the slashers vinyl? Um, I'm I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, okay. We've sold literally eight copies. I don't. That's not an exaggeration. Eight copies. So um, more than likely, I'll decide to just can it because. I haven't put it up to clubbers yet to see if they want to opt in, but in talking to clubbers, most of the ones I've talked to are like, eh, so I will probably literally just cancel that and then refund the eight people that bought it versus spending between 12 and $20,000 on a vinyl record that no one gives a fuck about. Um, vinyl, as you heard me bitch about on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot the other day, just does not. It doesn't sell at the capacity that I need it to sell for the deluxe packaging that we do. And the everything we do costs so much money with vinyl. So there's simpler ways and cheaper ways to do it, which would actually shave off probably like $6,000 per pressing. But I'm just stubborn and I don't want to make things look in my head inferior. So I think we're just going to. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's that's a longer discussion that I'm not going to get into in this uh, forum. But vinyl is. We'll see what the fuck happens. That's all I know. No one buys it, so it's a hard, it's a hard sell for a band that's on tour, let alone a obscure soundtrack from the you know late '80s, early '90s. That's all I'm going to say. Brad, any more titles coming to Walmart? Uh, potentially, yes. We're in talks with another one of a not announced movie. Um, and we're pretty excited about the contemporary I, I, title. I hope that comes to fruition because it's awesome. <laughs> um, someone asked, uh, I think this is funny, uh, why no Wynorski commentary on Papatopoulos? Uh, <laughs> go to the Wynorski bundle and look at the shirt. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to have Wynorski, it ready fast enough. I hate it. <laughs> Wynorski <laughs> would never talk about Papatopoulos. <laughs> Uh, he has a love-hate relationship with the movie. There's no, there's no way. 
Uh, and Wynorski was, he, he did, <laughs> I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Uh, like I said, he, he's, he's, he, I think he starts off his interview with like, if it wasn't about me, I'd be laughing my ass off, you know. Uh, he's a good sport about it, but it's, it's something that he, you know, we ask him, ain't happening. We're probably lucky to get the, the, the uh, interview, to be honest with you. Uh, Justin wants to know, does Chloe do artwork for any of the music releases? I For Greyface or Terrorvision? Because, yes, to both. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that didn't matter. Yes. The short yeah. answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, I do. You have some um, art there. Maybe you'd like to show people. Sure. I Yeah. Um, so, okay. <laughs> this one. So, on the music front, this is something I've been working on, and I can show it because it doesn't have a title. But so that's one thing I've been working on. That's for then, a, a gray face title that that's is. coming out this summer. Yes, and then I have been working on um, a Terravision title. It's actually for a Blu-ray, but I cannot show it because it would give it away in a, a second. Um, and then this is the back cover of the thing I teased the last time. But, Which we'll be announcing in a few weeks. Yes. So that's another yeah. gray face. There's your gray face tease. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another gray face um, films thing. Yeah. But yeah, she's historically done. Like if you went to the gray face band camp or something, there's a fuck ton of artwork. That's all Chloe. All the marshmallow ghost shit. Um, rude dude. I don't, I don't know. You've done. It seems like you've done a lot of stuff. Yeah, so you did spookies. Then, the the, the terrorism yeah. spookies release was Chloe. Yeah. Um, what else? Terrorism. Any other covers? Um, the brain. We did that one. I don't even but, remember what the brain looks like. That was the inner. It, it was the inner gate brain. fold. Yeah. It, had, it was the inner gate fold <laughs> part of that one. Yeah. No, not ringing a bell. No, I mean that no. sold out so long ago. It did. Yeah, it was a while ago. That hasn't um, been in my on my radar in like yeah. a decade. I don't remember what other ones. I feel like there's at least another one, but maybe not. I don't know. But and it's, I it's, mostly it's, do the gray face stuff. But yeah. Simple answer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, not seeing any giant questions here at the end of this. So uh, just reminder, everything from tonight, new LP release, four new home video releases, contemporary oh, still. There is, there is an important one here that we can address. Uh, yep. The guy asked, or I'm sorry, I don't know you. I don't know your. <laughs> I don't know your guy. This person asked, uh, the combined orders code doesn't work for me on the TV site. It says it's an invalid code. That is correct. It is taken down because we have discovered that certain uh, web browsers will calculate for any coupon codes that are available without knowing what the coupon code is based off of other users. And so we had numerous people. Use 95. Orders. Huh? 95. 95 customers that didn't have a combined orders that got free shipping without actually combining an order. Which which they don't actually get shipped. It requires my employee to then write them all, right. invoice one. them for $5, and it's really fucking annoying. So if you want to yeah. combine orders, write. Yeah, just just right. email. Um, um, I mean, can you can you put in uh, Elena's uh, email I mean, no. we don't probably put that on YouTube. No, just uh, just go to the fact page on the television site. That's right. yeah, and just just email uh, us there, and we'll do that. It's just that there isn't like a workaround on that. We don't know what to do because 95. Just... 95. <laughs> but it, it, I mean, it is. A, it happens on my browser too. Like anytime I go to order anything, it will say there's 15 coupon codes that are a possibility, and you can literally hit yes and it will cycle through everything until something applies and that's what was happening and there's literally no work around like we mm -hmm. can't figure out how to do it um because it's just a code that's going to be applied um yeah. so yeah it kind of sucks um but yeah uh yeah there's some culture shock stuff coming soon but We'll get. Yeah, to it's that. all Daniel. Like we, yeah, he, he, that's all Daniel. It, and, and it's stuff that's coming. It's just that we can't really speak for him because he's at his own pace. Um, but when things do pop up, we will uh, uh, let you know. 
I guess we've. I, I got another minutes. question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is why like Rock yeah. didn't talk at all. He was like a deer in the headlights last time. And now, now I can. Now I got to know time. everything. Is there going to be on the site on the Terror Vision site, terrorvision.com, a place to click to all the contemporary <laughs> titles in one place? I'm hoping the answer is yes. Because I'm asking. <laughs> we'll I think last that. last time that we had a I think last time we had a sale there was a little place to click. Like a sale oh. page you're saying? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. how you have the like the 2024 page. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Did we do that again? I mean, the 2024 page needs to probably be taken down anyway. Yeah, I, I took it down already, buddy. Thanks, little buddy. Thanks, big buddy. But yeah, that's uh, a good just, idea, John. Oh, good. Well, I do. I just saw the 2024 thing was down, so I figured it was in the works. That's why I dared to ask. Yeah. It wasn't, but now it <laughs> but, is. Yeah, Thank you. We'll do that. That's so. Well, that that will be located on the top left of the page for people who want to click, click on it and see all the titles together. Yeah, any update on future cassettes? I mean, there's stuff stuff in the works. I think we have 34, 34 cassettes coming out. So we'll get there. There's We're literally like, what, five people here plus <laughs> Elena and Brandon. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, we see a lot of like, well, why'd you announce so-and-so title last august and it's like we're just uh, we're just telling you what we're putting out we're not we're not, saying, we're not taking your money right now we're just yeah you know what we're working on and the thing is there's so much that's coming it's just it's it's going to be um very very soon um you know with, with a lot of the questions it's just just be patient because stuff's coming you know i know that i saw gator bait countless times in the chat gator bait everything's still um, coming everything's still yeah coming. everything's still coming as everything's being worked on but to to go to go through like what we just talked about with papatopoulos and nail gun and old kung fu master this stuff takes we make sure we exhaust every avenue of making it the best possible so we don't hold ourselves the whole point of um, because i see this a lot the whole point of announcing all those titles uh retroactively was probably a mistake because that's all the questions we get but it was to have people understand that we're here to stay and we're trying to do like some cool big shit and to get people excited it's all still coming it's just that it takes time money and a lot more time and even more time on top of that because then you got to QC everything. And uh, it is very time consuming, um, but it's all going to happen. Yeah, it's nothing. I, I like that we announced all that stuff because I, I thought it was a fun idea, but yeah, it seemed to annoy more people than not, which I don't, I don't know why you would be annoyed knowing that something that you're excited about is coming up, but neither here nor there to each his own. Uh, everything, including Happy Hell Night, which I get almost daily emails about. Um, <laughs> everything that we've ever uttered is coming. Yeah, and the whole reason for Happy Hell Night is because the Happy Hell Night is has a spooky story as far as there was another movie existed and then it was recut into happy hell night uh we are still searching for the original cut of the movie because it does exist somewhere um now if we find it i don't know but i'm one of those people that i feel that if we go through with it and we would have like a year ago some shit's gonna pop up and then i'm gonna be like what the fuck um, so we're exhausting all those avenues. And plus, we want to do some killer new extras on that. And we've had some interviews shot already. Um, and uh, there's a couple big names in the movie, too, that we're trying to do. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be stacked. And plus, it's a UHD. And UHD takes a lot of time. It's not an easy process. And it's also a very expensive process as well. So um Ha <laughs> ha.
No, oh, it's quiet. It's like we froze. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I not wasn't a rant or anything. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, we, we everything that we've announced is still in, still happening. It's just, it will be, it'll take some time. I hope to get everything out this year that we've already announced. Um, but it ain't going to happen. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's on the docket. But like, again, if there's an opportunity to pull something back to get it to do something better, like pop a top list. Like originally, like we were just going to do the interviews, like a couple new interviews and that. But then the whole thing came up for which is a Breastwick. And it's like, oh, shit, if we're able to do that, that makes I, like I feel like that really takes that release to another level. And we went ahead and did it. You know, the same thing with Nailgun could have been just a Blu-ray release because we already had it almost done. And it was just like with the material and finding out more about it, it's like, well, UHD is possible. Let's give it a shot. So we did that. Yeah. Um, yeah it's just it's it's important to us because we don't we don't want someone to do something better after we do it. You know, is it possible? Sure. There's some things that are possible. But like something like Nailgun and Papatopoulos, good luck, you know. And that's all because we took our time and we put more money into the releases. So, yeah, it's um, it's a grueling process. And like some of this stuff isn't fun. It's fun, but it's not fun at the same time. Um, but yeah. What release are you most proud of so far? Ryan? Did we I, do a Mr. Mayor or Beryl? Did we do Muppet Babies yet? <laughs> no, we didn't. Shit, I just announced it. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. That's a it's an impossible question. Um, I mean, I, I think I think with uh with, with with the most proud, I mean honestly, like um, I know it sounds funny, but something like Copperhead, um, having a film that was almost non-existent to able to do that blu-ray that is has like 10 hours of extras by the way it has a lost film on it that was never released uh doing that movie that like i said it was technically lost to time um having uh the soundtrack on uh cassette having the soundtrack uh the vinyl release and uh, also reissuing the cassette the vhs tape um yeah, that that was that was a huge undertaking for something that we knew that not a lot of people were going to care about. And, um, you know, that's the funny part is that a lot of what we release, we understand that it's not people are banging down doors for things to be released. It's stuff that Ryan and I grew up with um, and that we're like very fond of and we want to give a new life. Um, so, yeah, when when things don't do well, sometimes it's like, God damn it, like we you know, we wish that people were as excited as, you know, we we are about this stuff. But Copperhead, I'm very proud of. Um, Sri Gala, I'm incredibly I'm pr proud of because that was, again, a movie that was just gone, lost the time. I think it's um, simpler to ask, what are we not proud of? <laughs> I don't I don't have anything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why it's an I impossible mean, question. Yeah, I mean, because the only thing, I mean, the answer to that is that we only release movies that we like. We're not gonna release anything that. That's why we want you to trust the brand. We don't. And nothing's a package deal. Nothing's because oh, let's just do that. You know, things do come our way, and we're like, oh shit, that's fucking that movie's super badass. I forgot about that. That's literally like a movie, and probably like four or five weeks we're doing that we're announcing was a movie that I loved in the video store. And then the director literally reached out to us and was like, hey, um, I'm looking to distribute this movie. And I was like, fuck, holy shit. Yeah, I love this movie. Let's do it. And literally it just all happened right there. And the extras were done in no time. And literally, I think it took like almost like three months turnaround in order to get everything done because he already did everything in house himself. It was great. Which um, is rare. Yeah, which is like he was very excited, and um, yeah, the pack, the whole package came together. It's stacked, so that's uh, that that's um, you know, that's great. And then also, um, I guess the other thing we didn't talk about is the fucking subscription. People know it exists, man. They well, just don't want to join. What? <laughs> so, oh yeah, the the Shrigala, man. I don't know where this Shrigala 
thing came in from. I think it's because I responded that we're going to check it out. So the Shrigala glitch is literally one frame has one line from when the disc was being replicated. It, it There's no glitch. It doesn't... You, if you blink, you'll miss it. And that's how we missed it during QC because it's literally a frame. Um, so Trigal is good to go. We're not we're not doing it over. It's no. perfectly fine. Like, yeah, it is. It sucks that that little line's in there, but it's in, unless the movie stopped or, yeah, did something, it's like, and you're unable to watch it or it distracts you too much. That's different. It's definitely not a big deal. It's yeah, it's literally one line. And yeah, I agree. It it when I found out, I was like, son of a bitch. But it's it's so minor that it's not worth you just gotta blink more. That's it. <laughs> yeah, just blink more. <laughs> <laughs> it's also not something to avoid the release over. It, it, if if you weren't looking for it, you'd never even see it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's it's completely fine, and we're we're super proud of that release. Um, but yeah, the 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 subs. Uh, if you're in here and you're debating, I mean, if you sign up for the subscription right now, you get um, it, you you get those ne these next four releases, uh, right away at a discounted rate, um, big time, a big discount. Plus, plus the bundle is a big discount too. So, um, just think that. Ordering individually, most expensive. Uh, the bundle is the mid tier, and then if you sign up for the club, it's the really low cost tier. So. And you can get things from the wholesale page that, you know, at a discount. Everything is free shipping, so there's a lot of, a lot of pros to the club. City light stuff is going to be coming out randomly. Uh, yeah, already uh, the way we released it tells you it's not chronological. <laughs> hey, Brad, don't don't give attitude. <laughs> uh, any genres that we don't want to release? I don't think so. Uh, no, well, anything's on anything's on the table. For... I wouldn't do hardcore porn on television, but we we would start a new imprint maybe and do that. But we're not going to do that, so it doesn't really matter. But. Uh, that's more of like making sure that we can get into places like Walmart and actually have a lengthy and long career. Um, <laughs> no, it would be, it would, yeah, it would be, be fine if we can get, uh, get that. But yeah, uh, so I'm also thinking of blind buying because, of, yeah, don't worry about the, the, the saying a Srigala glitch is not the right way. It is nothing. There's yeah. no glitch. That's like a, a forum person complaint is like i can't <laughs> buy it it's glitchy fuck you um the gacy doc is we don't know how it's going to be distributed we made the pilot episode and we're going to screen it may 11th and then we're going to try to sell it to a streaming network because i've spent probably my entire life savings on it so it'd be nice to recoup something Grayface will be handling the physical media whenever we get to that point but that's eons away so uh i think that's probably probably good right it's, we're going on two I hours mean, yeah i mean i think that's long enough and i think we covered everything if you have any questions or anything like that or if you like want this one thing and not you know whatever if any questions about ordering just email us and we'll uh we'll get it straight I, yeah, the silence is deafening. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Thank you for okay, watching, so buying our shit, and caring about us even slightly. That's yeah. very kind of you. On that note, don't forget there's uh, also that contemporary show for the last uh, for the next nine days. So I want to play that trailer one more time as we go out. Thank you guys for the stream. We'll see you next time. Bye. Peace and love. Bye. Bye. Okay couple of items on the agenda. Firstly, welcome to the family. You have to unlearn your shapes. Okay. Your shapes are all wrong. Smooth operation you guys got going on. Where the hell are you? How much, brother? I'm supposed to be seeing a hidden image of Jesus here? <laughs> How is that possible? What do you think? <laughs> 
I'm very, very happy. Broski, I gotta bounce for a bit. I'm out of math. You want anything? Three is not an orgy. It is a threesome. Were you ever gonna tell me about this? I know they exist. I know they're real. I mean, if they ever tell me where they're from, I'll let you know. Be brilliant. You're going to go out, kill someone, and then we can... Watch your film. You look great on camera. Seriously. Seriously, I'm, you look really, really great. You should have just said that. I like getting fucked up. Yeah, come on in. See, from there, we're going to take over the fucking world.